Okay. Yeah. Hi, this Ali. meeting is being recorded. So let's start. Okay. Okay. So today let's complete installation. Okay. Uh, so first thing, um, can you uh, give your email IDs uh, in the chat so that I can uh, share uh, this Google Drive link where you can download all the softwares. <laughs> Okay, so I'll share the applications list. Okay, download them and install. So let's get into topics. about mule runtime first okay so development and environment and runtime first so mule soft uh, is built on java okay so basically whatever uh, code you write in java so you write it in dot java files right okay so once you write your code in .java file, after you compile, it will convert to .class file, okay? So <clears throat> Java runtime environment, okay? So each programming language will have a runtime, okay? So Java runtime environment can understand uh, only class file, okay? So which is compiled version of the code. Okay, so every runtime can only understand machine level language. Okay, so which is basically a compiled code. Okay, compiled code. So in Java, for whatever functionalities you write, you had to uh, do it on your own, and uh, each and every line of code you need to write it. Okay, for example, let's say if you want to connect to a database. Okay, so what you need to do? So let me show. So if you want to connect to a database and execute a select query, first you need to connection, create the statement, execute the query, read the result set, okay? And then close the connection, okay? So these are the steps that you need to follow. And each and every line of code, you have to write it, okay? So this is all manual coding, basically, okay, in Java. So uh, you need to, create connection, okay, or establish connection. Uh, then create statement, which is your query basically, okay. Execute the statement, okay. Then read the result set, okay. So after you are done reading the result set, you should close the connection. Okay, so these are the steps that you will be following in Java. Okay, while writing code to connect to a database and execute a select statement. Okay, so this has been simplified. Like all these types of tasks have been simplified in Mule in such a way that, like, if you want to write code, so you can just simply uh, drag and drop the component or connector that you want to. Okay of the component or connector that you want to uh, work on, select the operation that you want to do. So select, so if you do, if you drag and drop select, so you just need to write query here, okay? So you just need to write query here, okay? So which is the uh, second step, okay?
okay for create connection you don't have to write any code but you just need to configure okay so configuration in the sense like uh, if you need to give host uh, details port details user and password and database details okay so you just need to provide the configuration okay at back end what happens is mules of okay so here it will have everything like uh, uh, for uh, statement for reading the statement results if you uh, you can see uh, it has statement result class okay for everything it will have class okay so for select for uh, bulk uh, execution uh, for statement for stored procedure for everything it will have a class here okay so which are built based on the templates okay these are all template classes okay input values might change but purpose is same okay so basically input values might change for this okay purpose is same okay so few companies they may be using mysql and few companies may be using oracle sql okay but procedure is same you need to create establish the connection prepare the statement execute the statement read the results and close the connection okay mulesoft has built template classes in such a way okay so that means uh, to create connection they have uh, defined a class and you can establish connection for any data source okay it can be mysql it can be oracle so it can be anything okay so you just need to give the configuration details and this will take care of establishing the connection okay and this is common configuration for all databases see the configuration might refer to mysql or oracle or microsoft sql okay but whatever statement you write here that reflects or that executes in the connection configuration that you give okay so this select query uh, like uh, not only select query any query okay so they have given a given a common area where you can write any query that you want to execute okay so all these things are simplified in form of drag and drop okay so that you don't have to do much coding okay so you just need to configure few things and write your statements or uh, uh, scripting or expressions okay and mulesoft will take care of it okay so it will take the inputs from the configuration that you give here and it will uh, prepare another uh, class at back end okay for the code that you have written okay and execute it in the mule runtime okay so since you are uh like developing applications based on drag and drop methodology by help of mulesoft provided uh, libraries so this will create this will also have a coding format file okay so for java it is dot java file okay so for mulesoft it is dot xml file okay but this is a special xml, XML. so we call it as mule configuration file the reason that we call it as mule configuration file is if you see here if we create file like test okay so by default see traditionally how xml will look like is like uh, let me show see here so this is how just xml looks like okay but in studio studio is able to understand and give you few options here okay which is message flow global elements configuration xml like this okay so whatever this is like canvas area okay so whatever you drag and drop here so it will create the corresponding xml uh, tags at the back end okay so this is a flow so that's why uh, like it is named as a tset flow so here it has created a tag okay inside that flow i have dragged and dropped a listener uh, like i can drag and drop uh, requester i can drag and drop logger so depending on requirement i can drag and drop anything that i have here okay so correspondingly to generate xml I have a xml tag for http listener i have tag for request i have tag for logger like this okay so whatever you write here whatever you draw here in this canvas it will create a corresponding configuration xml okay and that configuration xml is the understood mule server which is nothing but mule runtime okay so mule runtime will have built uh, libraries for everything 
okay, for all connectors that you are going to use, it will keep on adding those jar files to this mule runtime so that it can un understand your code. Okay, it can understand your code and execute as per the logic you have written. Okay, so uh, basically in mule, you write code in dot XML and we call it as configuration XML. Okay. So that dot XML is being converted into dot class. Okay. At backend by mule runtime. Okay. By mule runtime. Okay. And mule runtime will in turn uh, depend upon Java runtime to execute the converted classes. Okay, so end of the day, it depends on Java to work. Okay, so for example, let's say I have started any point studio. Okay, so I'll have the corresponding uh, Java process here running. Okay, so if I stop this Java process, uh, any point studio won't run. Okay, so which means any point studio or uh, Mule runtime, uh, anything related to Mule soft relies upon Java runtime. Okay, so without Java, uh, without Java runtime, there is no Mule runtime. Okay, so whatever you code you write, uh, write in uh, configuration XML, that will be converted to dot class uh, by using Mule runtime, and this Mule runtime will rely upon Java runtime to execute that converted machine level language code. Okay, so this is how Mule soft works. Okay, so uh, the purpose of uh, MuleSoft is to ease your work. Okay, ease of development. Okay, using look and fill method. Okay, which is basically uh, drag and drop methodology. Okay, so you don't have to write much code. You just need to script it. Uh, like by selecting the right set of uh, combination, okay? And uh, if you run the application, the job will be done, okay? So the main purpose of MuleSoft is to ease of development. Second thing is uh, ease of code maintenance, okay? So if you take complex problem statements, okay? For example, let's say uh, your library management, Okay, so in library management, if I want to create this project in Java, okay, so if I want to write everything in Java, what I need to do, so I need to have a project for a student profile, profiles management, I need to have a project for a books catalog, okay, books catalog uh, uh, management, okay, so I need to have different set of projects for each functionality. Okay, and I need to write everything manually, so which is basically time taking. Okay, so if there is any bug or if I if I want to do any changes, okay, in these projects, so I'll have to manually edit the class, recompile it, everything, test it again, and then redeploy. Okay, so which is basically time taking. Taking. Okay, so if you go by programming languages, code changes like uh, first of all, code setup is clumsy. Okay, you will have. Uh, a uh, huge set of libraries, like huge set of classes or uh, uh, coding that you have written and you need to modify just one single line in that uh, module, okay? So, but still you have to uh, recompile everything and uh, execute it, okay? Uh, whereas in MuleSoft, uh, wherever you need the change, only the change, here also you just need to redeploy the complete application, but still compared to Java, this is less uh, time taking and uh, less burden, okay? So because whatever you develop, you develop using uh, templatized uh, shapes here, okay? Which we call it as count connectors or components or scopes, anything, okay? So using those template templatized shapes, we develop our code, okay? So that's why it, uh, the code maintenance is easier compared to uh, Java-based development, okay? Second thing is, you can integrate any end systems, okay? Any end systems that are active over internet, okay? Even though uh, those are not active over internet, you can integrate, but 
the possibilities of using such kind of integrations are very less. Only for your own purpose, you may use it. But uh, in this corporate world, like everything is connected to internet. Okay, so you can integrate any end systems. Okay, by means of data transformation. Okay, data transformation and transform transportation. Okay, so which means, for example, let's say uh, in the same library management, okay, in college, so everything is connected to land, right? All systems are connected to land, okay? So let's say uh, in your computer lab, uh, you have created some files and you need to send those files to library management, okay? So what you can do, you can have a common shared location, okay? Shared location, or you can have a college file server, okay file server so whatever files you upload right those files are in dot csv format okay or excel format okay which will basically have the uh, student uh, list okay newly enrolled student list or uh, books list that they want to order for uh, future reference it can be anything okay so now uh, what library management people will do, they'll import that CSV file into their application so that they can populate the table data okay, uh, via Java project. Okay, but you need to do a lot of coding. How MuleSoft can help you here is, so in this case, your source system is uh, fire, like shared location or file server. Okay, your source system is file server. And your destination system is database. Okay. So how MuleSoft can help you is, it can help you read the file. Okay. So database can understand in rows and columns format, which is a tables format. Okay. Whereas CSV, you have cells. Okay, not, uh, it's also rows and columns, but that format cannot be exactly understood by database. Okay, you need to interpret in between and make database understand that uh, this is what the feed that you are getting. Because see, uh, in database, if you try to insert any record to database, you have to uh, configure values for each column. Okay, at least for the columns that you explicitly specify, there should be a value present for it. Okay, so that may be nullable or not non-nullable uh, columns also. Okay, whereas in CSV, you can't judge, right? Like you can get an empty cell also for that particular column where it will fail. Okay, so that's why you need new soft for uh, data validation. Okay, to make sure whatever data you are receiving, that is correct. Okay, you need uh, new soft for transformation. Okay, so, the, so that it can convert uh, the uh, CSV file format to database related format and insert those records in database. Okay. And you need means of for transportation, like basically moving uh, the data from file server to database. Okay. So MuleSoft will be helpful in these kind of use cases as well. Okay. So that means you can integrate any kind of end systems. Okay. The purpose of MuleSoft can be huge. Okay. Uh, like uh, you can use it as an alerting uh, system, like where you want to send out uh, SMS or emails to your customers, uh, depending on an event. Okay. So you can use it as a uh, backend, uh, uh, like stack, backend web, web stack for your complete website. Okay. Where you want each and every data to be supplied by MuleSoft. Okay. You can use it as a file based uh, integration system like this. Okay. Uh, so there are n number of integration patterns that you can draw using MuleSoft. Okay, so the, the main purpose of middleware is uh, to send data from one place to another by interpreting the data in its native format. Okay, so that means uh, today if you are using file server and if you are using CSV file but your target system needs it in JSON or uh, some other format, your integration system should be able to convert that data from source format to destination format, and then update the data there, 
okay so not only mule soft integration layer can be of any tool okay like uh, uh, we have service now like we have uh, tipco we have uh, the methods okay so all these things are integration tools okay so their purpose is to uh, bring data from one source and send it to different destination by also changing the data format from uh, native format to the desired format okay so that is the main purpose of integration okay so in those uh, integration area so there are different types of integrations okay one is point to point integrations okay point to point integration uh, and the other is uh, web service based integration okay so these are the major classification among integrations okay point to point integration in the sense you have only one source and you have you have only one destination okay but in between you need to do lot of operations okay so those kind of integrations we can call it as point to point like uh, the previous example i gave like where uh, you need to pick a file from file server and insert it in database okay so this is point to point integration that means the range of audience are less okay you have only two parties involved here involved here okay uh, so the result of this integration can be anything but uh, the major number of parties involved here are three including mills of okay whereas web service based integrations so this will have wider range of audience okay for example let's say i have a uh, mcdonald's app okay so or a hotel management app okay so i have launched a new restaurant along with a mobile app so that my customers can order food from my restaurant okay so as soon as uh, they log in so i need to uh, store uh, like store their information okay i need to store the customer information so that as soon as they uh, they launch their uh, uh, app and go to their profile page they should be able to view the order history they should be able to view their personal information and update their contact information or addresses like this okay so in order to maintain all those things there should be a place where i can store the customer information okay so the first option would be database okay uh, second uh, end system i would need is uh, i need a smtp server to send out emails as soon as they order something i should be able to send out the invoice for that okay so i need uh, email or smtp based uh, end system so that i can send you email alerts okay i need some sms gateway okay so we we'll learn about uh, how to send uh, sms using mule soft okay i need sms gateway okay to send out messages uh, okay text messages or alerts uh, with respect to promotions or orders or anything okay so these are the common end systems that i can uh, see okay and uh, this mobile app can be used by anyone okay if it is floated in uh, play store or apple store it can be used by anyone that means web service based integrations have wider range of audience okay and parties involved okay so and the connection uh, between mobile app and these end systems is handled by mule soft okay so the connections and uh, for transformation and everything is being handled by mule soft okay so understood right hello Yes, yes yes sir yes, yes sir okay so connections and everything are handled by mule soft okay so basically as soon as you load your page if you want your profile information to be displayed mobile app will send a query to uh, mule soft mule soft will send a query execute a query in database okay after it receives the response it will understand that response and convert it into json format or whichever format mobile app can understand and it will send back that response back to mobile app okay so let me show you how that logic looks like okay 
So here, So here I am calling uh, this web service, okay? Uh, so uh, depending on the URL I pass, I'm calling a web service, okay? So let me run this app once. Okay, see, this is the URL that I'm going to call, okay? So depending on the URL, it will parse that URL dynamically, Okay, so this is basically a MuleSoft code, mocked version of MuleSoft code, okay? So which is uh, deployed in a uh, separate run. So if I configure this URL here, okay? So what mobile app is doing, it is uh, sending a HTTP request, okay? Sending a HTTP request to this uh, MuleSoft API, okay? At back end, I don't know what it is doing. As a mobile app developer, I have no idea what MuleSoft is doing. Okay, but in 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 turn, what MuleSoft is doing is it is querying database. Okay, querying database. It will result uh, like it will give a table data. Okay, in form of rows and columns. That MuleSoft is converting it to JSON. Okay, and then returning it back to mobile app. Okay. With the JSON response that it has received, what mobile app is doing is, so it will try to understand, okay, it will try to read data from that JSON, okay, and uh, assign it to local variables, okay, in mobile app, okay. After it assign it to local variables, it will try to display those things, okay. See, uh, this is a grid tile, okay, so which means uh, this area, okay. Just a second. Okay, see, uh, this is the response it has received from this uh, uh, web service, okay? And it is being displayed here, okay? So here it is considering only uh, like product image. Okay. So here it is considering only product uh, image, okay? It need title, uh, uh, okay, and it need price, okay. So the response it had received has so many details, okay, but it doesn't care about those details, okay. It it can take only what it need, okay. It needed only title, price, and uh, 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 name, okay, or image URL, okay. So only those things it is considering and reading it, okay. So that is how web service based integrations work, okay. So from uh, this mobile app, it can be anything, okay. So we basically call it as a client application, okay? So client application can be anything. It can be a desktop application, it can be a website, it can be a mobile app or anything, okay? So over HTTP, you will get request to MuleSoft. Uh, inside your MuleSoft logic, you can do any operations that you want to do, like uh, uh, say executing a select statement in database or uh, sending an email alert, okay, sending a SMS alert. So you can do anything inside MuleSoft, but you need to respond back to your client application with the affirmative response, saying either it's successful or failure, okay? So that depending on that, they can display it in their uh, end system or UI, okay? So if the product image is not available, you should be able to display like this, okay? Saying image is not available symbolically. Okay, so how you can do that, like uh, while reading for its, uh, so while reading uh, image, if the value is done, it will automatically display this uh, empty uh, tile, okay? So this is a web service based integration work, okay? Whereas point to point, it will have only maximum three parties involved, like source, destination, and news of, so that's it, okay? Whereas web service based integrations, it works over the internet, 
via http okay and it has wider range of audience okay understood right uh, one small doubt like yeah. uh, uh, he, you explained this example right here uh, where, where will this experience api comes i'll come to that okay i'll okay. come to that first you understood how this yeah, integration yeah. work okay. right web service okay. so the reason we call it as web services for example let's say if you write a java code in your system what happens you can execute it in your system alone okay yeah. so if you write a dot java class file and compile it and uh, you can execute only in your system okay whereas web service the code that you can execute remotely okay using a internet protocol okay yeah. so that we call it as a web service okay so i have written some logic in mulesoft uh, which is deployed somewhere else not in my physical system okay it's deployed in somewhere else in some server but i am able to execute that code using a internet protocol which is http okay, okay. to get some job done okay so okay. i want to display a uh, menu list page i am able to display that by hitting a http url okay okay got it right yeah 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 okay so yeah. that is what yeah yeah what is like b2b integration see okay so so these two are major types of integrations okay b2b b2c those are integration patterns okay, okay. so b2b in the sense business to business okay so there are two types b b2b and b2c business to customer and business to business okay this integration web service based integration that i have explained right now this is b2c business to customer okay so uh, the end system that i am connecting are purely related to my organizations okay they are nowhere related to my customer okay so my customer is not aware of which smtp server i am using which sms gateway i am using which database i am using my customer doesn't have to be aware of those things okay i just need to give them results based on their request okay so that is b2c business to customer integration whereas business to business integration let's say you you are using enterprise related applications like sap okay uh, you process or conquer okay conquer is basically uh, time tracking and daily expense uh, uh, related application okay so uh, how do you process payments in such kind of uh, end systems is via a file okay that is generated by bank okay what banks do they'll generate a payment file share it with the uh, sap uh, team so sap will place that file in uh, some sftp location okay you need to pick that payment file uh, and send it to conquer to for billing purposes to to make the final payment okay so those kind of integrations are business to business your customer is not aware of what's happening inside okay for example let's say uh, in your company uh, like you apply for a claim okay for your internet bill or whatever it may be okay so you don't know how that payment is being processed but you get the money that's it okay so at back end uh, like they may be using any types of tools okay they may be using sap they may be using workday or they may be using mulesoft to send uh, that file to conquer directly instead of using sap so it can be any type of uh, tool that or integrations that they are using but the end result will be same okay without you being aware of what's happening at the back end okay so that is b2b integration okay so uh, with respect to mules of particularly okay so b2b integrations we have something called partner manager okay partner manager for b2c we have web services that we can build in mules of okay web services in partner manager uh, so if you want to exchange some data between the organizations okay uh, so the best example would be for example let's say my company is a supply chain company okay what i do is i i send uh, like i have warehouses okay i can store uh, any type of uh, 
items in my warehouse okay and uh, i have received i can receive orders from amazon flipkart or snapdeal any anyone okay any e-commerce vendor okay so i need to send those item to uh, my customers uh, who are basically amazon flipkart and uh, snapdeal okay so in order to send those i need transport okay but my company is a supply chain company i don't own transport okay i don't have any transport okay so but i need to uh, generate invoices to a third party transport uh, like provider okay so we have something called uh, transparix okay transparix uh, uh, company okay. so what these people do is Uh, if you give the item dimensions and the length of the container you need what type of transport you need you, if you give all those details to them they will plan the pickup and delivery okay you don't have to worry about it but the payments has to happen between your supply chain company and transport okay so no where your customer will be involved in this transaction okay so uh, basically amazon flipkart and snapdeal they are not aware of how you are sending and from where you are sending okay they just need the item they have ordered it and you are sending it and in between you are setting up a deal with uh, uh, your company and transport okay for transport management system okay so these kind of transactions are b2b transactions okay so still you have to use some protocols right like internet protocols to send data between to exchange data between your parties like that's why you use partner manager here in mulesa okay yeah so it's not only a tool okay so b2b or b2c is not restricted to any type of tool okay it's restricted to nature of transaction okay if the transaction is happening between two parties where the customer is not involved that is b2b business to business transaction if the transaction is happening with the involvement of customer like where customer is ordering some item for you and you are shipping that item for the customer the, those type of transactions are business to customer transactions okay so technically these are uh, uh, this can be uh, implemented in these two ways okay either by web services or by partner manager okay but functionally these integrations uh, depends on the nature of transaction understood right yes sir okay. jagdish is h to h and b to b as same sir no is h2 h and b2b are same uh h2 h i am not aware see naming conventions can be anything okay problem with integration is since you have so many number of tools everyone like anybody can write their own definitions okay, okay. so so i am not sure what is h2 h uh, but th- that may be a just pattern okay Okay. so it's not a technical term okay yeah. so any doubts so far no jayesh okay uh, so uh, going forward we'll establish this mobile app further okay so uh, as we establish this mobile app i'll explain about uh, epilet connectivity experience process and system okay so okay so going back to integration patterns okay so you you understood about these two types of integrations mainly right point to point integrations and web service based integrations yes okay so in musoft you can uh, like implement logic for any type of integration okay so coming to web service okay so web services are defined based on uh, internet protocol which we call it as http okay or https like if you want to secure okay so http in the sense hypertext transfer protocol okay the nature of this protocol is 
you can send any type of data see here in this uh, HTTP, HTTP URL I'm getting a plain inform okay, uh, in some JSON form okay. whereas this HTTP URL it is displaying a web page uh, with the images and uh, text and everything okay so using different HTTP URL you can directly download a file okay so the nature of HTTP URL is such a way that like you can transfer any type of data or internet. Okay. So secured or unsecured, it's up to the implementer. Okay. So how they have based on how they have implemented, we can transfer it uh, over a secured channel or unsecured channel. Okay. So I will come to that part where, uh, later. Okay. So web service, the major protocol that you use is HTTP. Okay. There are two types of web services. One is uh, REST, okay, and the other is SOAP, okay. So REST, RESTful web services are basically uh, flexible, okay. They, they are defined based on standard HTTP protocol, okay. In standard HTTP protocol, you have something called methods, okay. So in database, you have statements, right? Like select, update, insert, delete, drop, like this kind of statements okay similarly in http also you have uh, uh, those kind of statements which we call it as methods okay so in methods we have uh, get okay we have post we have put patch delete okay, etc like there are uh, many methods in http okay so get method in the sense you are trying to retrieve some information from the uh, server, okay? Post method in the sense, you're trying to create a record in the server, okay? Put is you're trying to replace that record, okay? You're trying to replace that record, okay? If it exists, it will replace that record. If it does not exist, then it will create that record, okay? So post is the only update basically. Okay, so delete is something which you uh, which you can use to delete a record in this server. Okay, so HTTP protocol uses methods. Okay, to perform some operations. Okay, backend logic can be anything like using a get method. Also, you can so backend operations can be anything. But uh, literal uh, the meaning of these methods is uh, same. Using get you can fetch record from server using post you can put data to server like or create data in server you can delete record in server like this okay so restful web services are built using the http protocol itself okay whereas soap web service those are built like soap is a derived protocol from http okay so it will have crud operations okay crud is basically create read update okay so this will have thread operation and so whereas in rest uh, you will have uh, http methods standard http methods okay restful web services xml json or uh, form data any kind of data okay it can support multiple types of data okay. restful web services where it can always support on the XML. Okay. So these are the two major types of web services. We'll develop each type of web services tomorrow. Okay. So these are the two major types of web services. In MuleSoft, you can uh, develop any type of web service. You can develop a RESTful web service. Also, you can develop a SOAP web service. Okay. So these two are the major types of uh, web services. Okay. So coming to layered architecture, for example, let's say you, you want to build a web service for a menu list. Okay, menu list itself, which is uh, basically this uh, app that I was talking about. Okay, so if you want to create a web service for menu list, uh, you need to understand what is your source. Source is basically mobile app. Okay. And you need to understand what type of data it can understand. Okay, it can understand JSON. Okay, for now. 
so you need to know your destination and system as a new software developer you should be aware of these things while you build an api okay so you need, first thing is you need to know the source then you need to know the destination you need to know the data formats that are supported by source and destination and you need to know what you can do in mulesoft to support the transaction okay so you need to know this destination which is database okay in database uh, it has a uh, item table okay restaurant table okay and uh, location table location table okay so in mulesoft while you design api here what you need to know is how securely you can build an api in such a way that i can reduce burden on my database okay so while the customer launches mobile app few people they may have enabled location services and few people they may have disabled location services okay if they have disabled location service they need to select everything like select star from okay, if they have disabled location service they need to select select star from item okay whereas if they have enabled location service they need to select select star from item range okay range equal to 5 which is basically 5 km range whatever restaurants are available within 5 km range it needs to display items from that restaurants only okay whereas if they have disabled location they need to select everything from it okay so if it is based on range the data that you are going to select will be less okay so there is no harm in that you can support any number of uh, uh, queries like that okay for example let's say at, uh, exactly at same time globally worldwide there are around 30000 people accessing your uh, mobile application okay so that means for each user you are establishing a database uh, connection okay in database connection pool okay we have something called connection pool for database okay in database connection pool it can understand or it can uh, handle only 10000 uh, concurrent connections okay so that means at a time only 10000 users can connect and execute statements in database okay it can support only 10000 concurrent connections okay during this time few uh, like remaining 20000 people will experience lag in your mobile app okay so they are they either they won't be able to see the data at all or they will see the data with a delayed uh, like notification okay so which is not a good idea okay so instead uh, the reason is see you are allowing your customers to directly interact with database with a single layer which is mulesoft one single api okay so here you can solve this problem in two methods okay first thing is you can restrict your customers in such a way that uh, if you are not supporting 20000 customers additional at a given point of time time then you are not supporting them you are straight away saying them that uh, uh, like internal server error or something went wrong like this kind of error messages you want to display those messages directly to those customers because anyway you can't han- handle uh, those many number of uh, uh, like transactions at a time okay so that is one method which is basically rate limiting we call it as rate limiting okay okay so you can restrict number of users uh, can uh, those can consume your mule soft api at a given point of time using rate limiting okay second approach is you can go with uh, api led connectivity okay uh, okay sorry let's not get into this okay you can go with cache okay you can go with cache so these two are the options for you okay if you want to support everyone so then you can go with cache if you don't want to support everyone if you want to support only those many number of transactions that you can support then you can go with rate limiting okay so cache 
how cache works is it's a temporary database in your mule runtime okay so it's like a temporary database in your mule runtime okay so what you can do for example let's say uh, let's say this 30000 requests are coming from different geographical regions okay so at least few of them will be from same location right they may be from same same location okay so if it is from same location you don't have to select that query again and again because menu list remains same for all those people who are residing in same area menu list remains same so you don't have to select each and every time a user launches the api in that area okay so what you can do for first time you can select from database and store it in cache okay so for the second time if you get a request from that location again okay you don't have to hit database now you can directly retrieve from cache and give it back to the mobile application or customer okay so that they can explore the menu list this way you have reduced uh, number of connections with database okay so that means you, you are expanding the space for more number of users to use your app okay so this way you can reduce the uh, number of connections to database and at the same time you can serve your customer with the relevant data okay whereas if you use rate limiting this can also be applied at mule soft level okay so you, at the api manager level by means of policies okay so rate limiting is basically basically a policy okay so using this policy what you can do is you can avoid the traffic here itself you don't have to send it to database at all okay if you are if the uh, threshold value is exceeding for example let's say rate limiting 1000 requests per second okay so if i configure the rate limiting policy like 1000 requests per second that means i can accept only 1000 requests requests per second i cannot accept more number of requests than that okay i straight away reject saying that the limit exceeded okay i'm not even sending it to database this is different method okay among this this is feasible uh, solution okay because by using cache you can serve your customers as well as you can reduce burden on your database okay so so understood right like in which cases we use cache and uh, hello yeah yeah yes sir yes sir okay so uh, this is one solution okay so second thing is for example it's okay so i i have decided how i need to write my logic and i have written logic in single project okay in one single project i have written that logic okay now comes the security part okay security in the sense uh, not only code uh, like uh, api security code security as well okay there is something called abstraction okay okay so there is something called abstraction okay what this abstraction is you should not uh, like expose your logic or you should not expose your end systems to your client applications directly okay so you should be able to mask at least some bits and pieces of it okay so in order to establish abstra abstraction in views of they follow something called uh, api led architecture okay so they follow something called api led architecture okay so what this api led architecture does is it will have three end system like uh, three mules of projects okay so this api led architecture will have three mules of projects okay so one is uh, experience api another is process api and another is system api okay in one single mules of project itself you have divided into three parts okay okay so in experience api you will not write any kind of uh, logic okay so you simply forward that request to process api okay 
So in process API, you write transformations. For example, let's say uh, you are trying to query data from database and you have received it in table format. You need to convert that into JSON format. Okay, so those kind of transformations or we call them as business logic basically. Business logic because uh, the nature of data that is supported by database is different, but what you want to return to client application is different. So that means you need some customization there. So those types of customizations, we call them as business logic, okay? All the business logic, you write it in process layer, okay? In system layer, in system layer, you will write logic in such a way that it connects to this database, but you should be able to execute any query depending on the request from process layer, okay? Process layer should tell system API what query to execute, okay? So that this logic that you have written in system uh, layer can be reused by different APIs also, okay? Right now I'm talking about only manualist API, but you have customer API where you want to select customer profile information from the same database, but different query, okay? So you don't have to uh, write, uh, duplicate that logic only for the sake of uh, different query, right? What you can do is you can use same character itself. So here you can parameterize this query, like uh, uh, you can put that into some variable, okay? Like where's dot uh, query. So in this query, you can uh, send dynamic query, like the select star from item sometimes, select star from customer like that, okay? So you can send a dynamic query, okay, from process API. So in system API, you need to write uh, logic to connect to database and execute the query that is passed on, okay? So system layer interacts with the backend system now, okay? Experience layer interacts with client application and process layer remains within MuleSwap, okay? So that means only API that is exposed to client application is the experience API, which does not have any logic or business logic, okay? So still your customer won't be able to see what, uh, like what logic you have written in MuleSwap, but work of abstraction, they have designed this API-led architecture, okay? In such a way that you need to divide your logic into three parts, experience API, process API, and system API, okay? All these three projects are mules of projects itself, okay? It is just a functional convention that they use, okay? Say experience API also you write in a studio itself, process API also you write in studio itself. Everything is a mules of project, okay? Only the way you call them or name them is different. That's it. understood, right? Like in which cases you use experience like API led architecture? Uh, yes, but a uh, small question like uh, in experience okay. API, uh, mm -hmm. if it if the user is using a desktop or a mobile application, a mobile it depends upon like uh, does it have any effect on experience API like? Uh, what uh, device they are using, how to project the data to the uh, system. It's experience uh, like uh, it's mainly, okay, see, the job of experience API is, uh, it needs to receive uh, HTTP requests. See, uh, when I deploy a sample application tomorrow, you'll, you, you'll okay. get to understand. Okay. okay. So uh, the purpose of experience API is uh, you should be able to receive requests from your client application, pass on that request to process API in Azure format. Process API will uh, decide if there is a necessity to call system API or not. If there is a necessity to call, call uh, system API, it will call the system API, get the data from system API. If there is a need to transform it, transform the data and then respond back to experience api and then back to client application okay, okay. so the play the major player here is process and system api experience api is just an a top level creamy layer where uh, uh, like it is exposed to client application only okay? okay so mobile apps cannot directly hit process api and system api okay because uh, in most of the projects you will be using private port for uh, process and system API. Okay. Okay. So only for API, you will be using public port. Okay. 
so you will be applying all the policies in experience api only okay so your okay. Uh, like security policies rate limiting policies everything you will be applying in uh, experience api okay yeah okay sir yes thank you sir i have a doubt yeah uh, it's regarding ktch actually rate limiting policies we use in policies right Mm -hmm. how we need to use ketch like uh, where we need to implement that one cash uh, like it depends okay. okay there is a policy for cash as well okay where you can set the cash key and uh, store the response in uh, any point uh, uh, platform gateway api gateway itself okay, okay. so cash can be implemented at project level also at platform level it can be at any level Okay. okay. For so project level, you, we need any components or how we need? Yeah, yeah, you need. Uh, see, uh, if you implement cache at project level, so it will create a temporary uh, database objects. You need to use object store. Okay? okay. That object store will will reside in Mule runtime, not in your project. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. it will reside in your uh, mule run okay. so tomorrow let's dis let's uh, dig deep into api led architecture okay, okay. Uh, then uh, when we come back to cache then uh, we can check okay thanks sir we got three types of apis in our sir hmm. sir these are all apis we are going to design in the anypoint studio itself yeah Yeah, our, 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 all, all these three, all these three APIs are mule projects itself. Okay, yes, so only APIs. thing is the naming convention, like how you name them, matters. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Or else we use the design center to uh, build the blueprint for the API. Yeah, yeah. So that is different actually. So that is just okay. API specification. Okay. And okay. you don't write say basically you will never write uh, API specification for all three layers. You only have to write for experience API. Okay. So okay. I'll tell the purpose of writing API specification tomorrow. Okay. Okay. See, for example, let's say I'll give you a hint. Like, for example, let's say if I'm building this mobile app, okay, and I don't know music. Huh? Okay. From MuleSoft, what I'll do, uh, I'll check with MuleSoft developer if uh, there is any option, uh, like uh, uh, if there is any way that I can know what type of information you are sending. So that depending on that, I'll have to write my logic in uh, uh, my mobile app code. Okay. So what MuleSoft developer do? So instead of uh, like giving all those details over an email or something like that. they'll create a api specification in any point platform and publish that to exchange okay so that in exchange documentation i can refer what request i need to send what response i might get okay okay so those things i can see in exchange itself so okay. we, tomorrow we'll dig dig that uh, dig into that deeper okay okay yeah So got uh, understood, right? Any questions? Yes, sir. Yes, I understood. Okay. Yes, sir. Good. Sir, in deployment, I think you will be covering this on premise as well, right? In deployment, yeah, on premise also. On premise, like whatever is there in deployment. Let me share my screen. Okay. See. here whatever you see in deployments guide right in uh, deployment methods like uh, direct deployment via endpoint studio and via cicd everything uh, will be discussed okay. okay i'll share this documentation with you so this is self explanatory okay whatever documentation i provide i provide in this way okay so you can simply follow this documentation install it in your local system and test it out Sir, we only test the API through Postman only, or we got any other tools to? Uh... No, you can test. You can test it via so. Uh, you can test uh, via any tools. You can even test using uh, Chrome. Okay. 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 Ok
Okay, so here I am accessing this uh, web service using Chrome, right? But it has to support few operations. That's it. Okay. It depends. Like, uh, uh, if your API writes only get method users get methods, then you can uh, test it from Chrome also. Okay. okay. Whereas if your API uses, uh, uh, like, if if your API has yes. logic, yeah, like, Chrome only supports get method only. Right? Post method. Yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if if your uh, API supports along with some custom headers, you cannot mock that in a uh, Chrome. You have to use Postman. Okay. Okay. So you can use any testing tool. Like you can use Shopify. You can use Postman. These two are majorly used uh, testing tools. Um, so what is the best practice here? Uh, like best practice uh, with respect to using tools? Yes, sir. No, no. testing the API. Okay, there are not the best practice actually uh, for using uh, uh, this. Okay, so a best practice in the sense, uh, see, uh, it depends in real time what you use the like test, uh, how they you... want to test. We used Postman only. Okay, okay. In, in uh, for McDonald's project, like uh, there, I had used SOAP UI. So we have to write uh, functional test cases, like we have to list everything. Okay. Uh, like we need to write the test cases and we need to uh, add the request and define those uh, test cases in SOAP UI. Okay, we have to do it manually. Yeah, manually. There is no oh automation for this. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, or like you can write VB script, but uh, that is way beyond uh, yeah. our practice. Because that is not our are, job, sir. Yeah, yeah, think. yeah. We don't do that. So testing people will do that. Yeah. Jagdish Harish here. Uh, Harish here, so he, yeah. would you teach us API specification too? Tomorrow we will be starting with that itself. Because, I have a request. Okay. Yeah. Speak yeah. on, speak on. Yeah, see, tomorrow plan is to uh, like write API specification for experience API. Okay, so for menu list itself, uh, we'll be doing it. Okay. Uh, we'll be implementing experience process and system API. Uh, along with API specification and uh, deployment. Okay, so tomorrow API connectivity completely I'll explain. Okay, on, on top of that, I request you to show me how you will receive request uh, to do the API specifications. Kindly show me that. Okay, okay, yeah. See, uh, like to be frank, in few companies, uh, it's just a one word statement, you know. What they'll do is uh, like I have a database and you can execute queries there build an API to uh, respond in a JSON format. That's it. These kind of problem statements you'll get. In few companies, you'll get a proper functional design document, technical design document, everything. Kindly, kindly. In those... Yeah, in, tomorrow in I'll show. Yeah, give I'll some show. Examples. yeah, yeah, I'll show. Yeah. Thank you, Jagdish. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, this yeah. is Thank you. Uh, like on the deployment part, we have a different environments, right? Uh, right, like dev uh, UAT prod. Yeah. So do we need to, uh, like how we are specifying our securities, like applying security schemes in the dev and UAT? Is that the separate one or? No, no, we... see, the policies, policies will never be environment specific. Those are platform specific. Okay. You, you should never apply policies based on the environment. Okay, you should apply policies for your API in all environments in your platform. That's it. Okay, oh. policies will never be environment specific. Whatever logic you write, that can be environment specific. Okay, for example, let's say, uh, see, SMS gateway is costly. Okay, we need to pay subscription amount for it. Okay, while testing, uh, you should allow only one request in uh, lower environments. Whereas in production, uh, you should use full-fledged. Okay. So if you want to set those kind of restrictions, you need to update your configurations in your project. Okay. And for each environment, you will be maintaining properties well, right? There you need to mention how many uh, maximum number of SMS you can send. Okay. So those environment specific. Your logic also, you can make it as environment specific. But uh, policies, you can never make them as environment specific. Those are platform specific. Uh, what? 
what is meant by platform specific uh okay so that uh okay so that will take time to explain we'll uh, we'll explain tomorrow platform specific anyway we are going to write api specification right that would be correct time okay thanks you So, in doubt, no, no, sir. Okay. No, sir. Okay. So we'll close this session for today.